Hello dear students in continuation with the muscarinic actions let us see in today's session what are all the muscarinic mediated actions on the blood vessels so as we saw we are taking acetylcholine as a prototype drug prototype drug so please remember the muscarinic receptor which is present on the blood vessel is m3 receptors m3 receptors so what happens when the acetylcholine acts on the blood vessels it will going to cause usually it will going to cause vaso vaso dilation so please remember it will going to cause vaso dilation so let us see how this vaso dilation will occurs so before going to this so let us understand so whenever the acetylcholine acts on the blood vessels we usually all the blood vessels please remember all blood vessels will be dilated whereas there are few places where the blood vessels have got cholinergic innervations so which are all the sites which receives cholinergic innervations so cholinergic innervations can be seen in the skin of face neck and salivary gland salivary glands so what happens whenever it acts on the m3 receptors so usually it will going to cause vasodilation and if the muscarinic action takes place through this cholinergic innervation at the skin of face or the neck or the salivary gland it will going to absorb the flushing we're going to observe the flushing of the face due to the vaso dilation and also at the same time there will be fall in blood pressure due to vaso dilation so basically please remember that m3 receptors are present on the vascular endothelial cells so it will be present here so this will be the vascular endothelial cells vascular endothelial cells so what happens this vasodilation is primarily mediated so once acetylcholine activate this m3 receptors which are present on the vascular endothelial cells there will be release of please remember there will be release of release of ed rf what does ed rf stands for it is called as endothelium endothelium dependent endothelium dependent relaxing factor relaxing factor which will going to release the nitric oxide so how this nitric oxide will be released is also an interesting part so there will be 
pathway which gets activated in the endothelial so which is the pathway that will be activated in the endothelium so the pathway is the phospholipase c inositol triphosphate diazole glycerol pathway will be activated which in turn this pathway will go into activate the endothelial endothelial nitric oxide synthase so this is responsible for causing the vasodilation through the nitric oxide so basically this nitric oxide which is produced will going to cause the vasodilation will going to cause vascular smooth muscle relaxation vascular smooth muscle relaxation which leads to vasodilatation vasodilatation so next we'll see what happens if there is a endothelial damage so we saw what happens with respect to the intact for the normal normal endothelium in the normal endothelium so if you activate the m3 receptors activation will going to cause vaso dilatation so on the other hand if there is a endothelial damage endothelial damage what happens is the acetylcholine will going to enter or you can say diffuses it diffuses to vascular smooth muscles or vascular smooth muscles cells muscles and the m3 receptors which are located at the plasma membrane m3 receptors at the plasma membrane will mediate the mediate the vaso constriction vaso constriction so please remember if there is a intact endothelium there will be vasodilation if there is a damage in the endothelium the acetylcholine will diffuses into the vascular smooth muscles and the vasoconstriction will be mediated through the m3 receptors which are located in the plasma membrane following this you also should remember that whenever there is a whenever there is a activation of cholinergic nerves if there is a stimulation of cholinergic nerves which are innervating the venous this will going to cause the erection which is mediated due to the release of release of nitric oxide and due to the dilatation of cavernosal cavernosal vessels mainly through the m3 receptors 
so however this response is very minimal in nature very minimal so just to recapitulate what happens when you give a acetyl colon so the acetyl colon with respect to the blood vessels basically they are going to act on the m3 receptors so if the endothelium is intact please remember if the endothelium is intact so it will going to cause vaso dilatation so if it is damaged damage we're going to see vaso constriction so how this vasodilation is produced so basically vasodilation is produced due to the release of the endothelium dependent relaxing factor which further will going to increase the release of nitric oxide and altogether there will be a activation of the pathway that is responsible for the activation of nitric oxide synthase that is phospholipase c inositol triphosphate diazoglycerol pathway will be activated and this in turn will going to activate the endothelial nitric oxide synthase this will going to further increase the nitric oxide levels so these nitric oxide levels will going to cause vascular smooth muscle relaxation relaxation so therefore it produces vaso dilatation vaso dilatation so this is the muscarinic actions which can be seen with respect to acetylcholine on the blood vessels